So the other day, when I went out to buy some fabric, I was wearing a disposable mask. Je me sens un peu gênée parce que j'ai un masque jetable. And I have to say, I was pretty embarrassed about it because everybody else there was wearing a fabric mask that they made themselves probably because, you know, they're going to the fabric store. And I was there with my disposable mask in line waiting to buy fabric to make masks. So there was really no solution there. I know I'm kind of late to the party making masks in July, but I never had the fabric before to make them. I know they recommend 100% cotton and I didn't have that. And I didn't think an old see-through bed sheet would cut it. So I waited and I finally got my fabric and I finally made these. So I know making masks is pretty self-explanatory, but here's how I made those. <laughs> Apparently you have to wash your fabric before you start working with it, so I started by sewing the two raw edges of each fabric together with a zigzag stitch. Not only does it keep your expensive fabric from fraying and breaking your equally expensive washing machine, but it also allows you to get rid of that random thread you've been stuck with since that one project. At least, that's what I did. Then I threw it in the wash. <laughs> Next, I proceeded to destroy all that hard work by seam ripping all of it while watching Grey's Anatomy. Also, I'm sorry if you caught a glimpse of that episode because it was basically about a man without a face who kind of reminded me of the bad guy in Captain America. I actually only saw this movie once when I was about 10, so I might not remember it correctly. Was there a weird villain guy with a red face and a weird nose, or is that just a nightmare I had? Anyway, some of you might find that really gross and I apologize. Back to what this video is actually about. I got half a meter of pink cotton and half a meter of yellow cotton, and only that because that stuff is expensive. I decided to make double-sided masks, so one side pink and one side yellow. This way, if you ever take it off for some reason, you'll know which way to put it back on. I cut out 12 rectangles. Rectangle? Re rectangles. I cut out 12 rectangles, each 23 centimeters long and 19 centimeters wide. I was making 6 masks in total for my family and my grandma, but as it turns out, my head is a lot smaller than most of them and it only ended up fitting me and my sister. I ironed everything before cutting my elastic. I cut 12 pieces, all 20 centimeters long, spoiler alert, they were too long, and pinned everything together. It took me a while to pin everything, mostly because I needed to make sure the two pieces were perfectly aligned and that my elastic wasn't twisted on the inside. If you have round elastic, though, it really doesn't matter. Oh, and can we just take a moment to acknowledge the fact that I was working on a table and not on the floor? I finally took out my trusty sewing machine and started sewing all around the mask with a straight stitch. Okay, so this is kind of ridiculous, but I made the elastic way too long. So I had to cut it down each piece and now it looks like this. I have to go like this, you know, so it's straight. And I just, I wanted to show that part because it looks so straight and flat in the clips from before. And I just wanted to make sure that I showed you exactly what it was supposed to look like. That's what it looks like now. And I'm gonna sew those in place like this now. And at first I tried to sew the sides like this by stretching them out and pulling, but it just didn't really work out. And I realized on the other side that I didn't actually need to do that and that I could just sew it normally. So that's what I did for the others. I made sure to leave a small opening to flip them inside out. Before doing that though, I cut all the extra threads and cut each corner so they wouldn't look weird on the outside. I ironed them again because not only were they all wrinkly after all that flipping, but it just makes the seams a lot cleaner when they're really flat. Then it was time for the folds. Honestly, I pretty much just eyeballed everything. I didn't make them perfectly symmetrical, but I really didn't mind. Next, I top stitched everything in place. It was kind of hard at the corners and at the folds because of all the layers. It would just get stuck, so I had to pull on it pretty hard, but it all worked out in the end. I sewed a second stitch all around the mask to solidify everything because it's going to get washed a lot. Am I the only one who really messes up her stitches when they're visible? They always look so good on the inside, and then when it's finally time to showcase them, something just goes wrong. Is it just me? Papa. And here I am, naive and eager as I urge my dad to pick one and try it on. Take your pick! <clears throat> Ooh. <laughs> Luckily, it fit my little sister, and we got a little carried away.
Regarde un peu là. Tu pas une bonne idée de le faire comme ça. Non, non, mais attends. 